Are you frustrated with online dating? Confused by all the new apps and fancy dating sites? Do you find yourself choosing the wrong person again and again? Well, studies show that hiring a dating coach can maximize your online dating experience. So no worries, I've got you. And I've created a virtual course called Doing Dating Right. It's a five video series that you can complete at your own pace in your own space, right at home. How to write your online dating bio, pick that perfect picture, and so much more. Want more info? Go to my website at jenniferherbits.com. Again, it's jenniferherbits.com. Hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning. This is Doing Relationships Right. I'm Jennifer Herbitz and I'm your host every Tuesday and every other Friday for a Just Jen episode. And if you are watching today, then you see the fabulous Miss Tanya Carter in the house. And if you don't, if you're not watching and you're just listening, then you know, you can hear us. And I have Tanya here and she is a transformation coach. Did I say that's a transformation coach? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I love to see you. It's so nice to talk to you. I Hi, know. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a while. I think it was 2019 when we did an episode together. So it's I been know. like three years. Is it been? Oh my God. It's been close I've been doing to three, this for years. three years. Do you believe it? Right. That's good. Congratulations. I can't it. Oh, thank you. I can't believe it. I'm like, I've, every week, every year, I'm like, you know what? I think I'll hang up my microphone. And then I'm like, okay, one more season. Okay. Yeah. Podcasting is fun. It is fun. But it I, is. You know, I don't think people realize how much work it is. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's it is. It's yeah. a lot of work. Always. I think people are just like, oh, she shows up and she does this thing and she gets on her mind. I'm like, no, it's a yeah, lot. It's a it's lot. A lot. Well, let's talk about you. Let's it. talk about you. So first of all, hi. We are, So if everyone doesn't know Tanya, which you should because Tanya, you're everywhere. I feel like, you know, well, I, I stalk <laughs> you because you're my friend. But um, <laughs> tell everybody what you do, what's going on, where you started, how you started. We're talking about divorce today and divorcing your story, which I love. I think that's mm -hmm. awesome. I think you have a little a twist on divorce that a lot of people don't have. Okay. Thank I think you. you're kind of cool and fresh and and, and so tell tell everybody. Go ahead. Hi. Um. Yeah. So I I am a transformation coach. I changed it, um, from divorce to transformation coach. Um, because I'm in the business to really change the trajectory of of women's lives. Um, post divorce or even, you know, a long term relationship or even someone who's been in the same cycle of repeated relationships. Right. And so um. I've been doing this for um, maybe about four years. I, my theme is really to help people divorce their story, um, not necessarily legally, but more mentally and emotionally, um, spiritually, physically, financially, like just really detaching ourselves from narratives that truly don't serve the highest of who we really are and who we can become. And so in a nutshell, that's what I do. I love that. And I think that we forget that there, that our story really does affect us and the narratives we put in our head and the, what we surround ourselves with. We're so worried about the everyday minutia of like, let's get the lawyer, let's get the kids, let's get, we forget about the story that we've created that we carry with us. I love that that's how you, you take things on. Tell us a little bit more, you know, if you don't mind. Oh yeah. I mean, what, what made me really wake up to that is because I was in my story yeah. um, for about half of the decade. I tell people this from 2010 um, to even 2015, my story was the same. Mm -hmm. It was a different year. I was a different age. At that time, I was almost 30 in 2010. I was 35 and going on 35 in 2015, but everything was still the same. Okay. And I realized that I, I, was, I wasn't happy with myself because at this time I was divorced. Um, it had nothing to do with my, my ex or anything. It just had everything to do with me. And I did not like the direction. I didn't like my choices. I just didn't like the woman I was becoming. I didn't like the relationships that I entertained. I didn't like settling knowing that I did, <laughs> you know, <laughs> knowing that like, no, I settled for this. Like we know we may not admit it, but we're no one we're settling oh and coming to that level of truth for myself woke me up to say, okay, you, you have to do something. And that something was just making a choice. And that choice was to not stay in this story. I didn't know what it looked like. I just knew where I was, wasn't working. And it was time to let go. So if someone, if you're coaching a client and someone comes to you and, cause I have a hard time with this myself and someone comes to you and you know, like you can tell that there's, yes. you know, we know as coaches that someone's settling or they're, they're stuck in their story. How do you, how do you go there with them? You know, I, I feel like people are, are, it's tough to say, you know, they're friends and family. It's like, they don't want to listen, but you're as a coach, you, you know, 
obviously, you know, and we know, because I've, I've been there too. I've been yeah. stuck in my story many times. <laughs> you know, we do the work, right? Absolutely. You do the work. Um, one of the things is that you do have to be coachable. You have to be coachable, meaning that chances are what I tell you may be opposite than what you already have came up with and trust that I'm here to help you. Now, I do believe my approach matters, right? Depending on what people are, um, they could be um, in a very um, emotional state where um, it's just really heavy for them. Mm -hmm. And so one of my primary goals is to make sure that I lead with empathy and compassion because um, when you're in it, sometimes you just don't really see it all. And actually you shouldn't, it's in layers. Okay. So let's let, but let's still take the journey. Let's still be coachable though. Let's still do what we really don't feel like doing, but we know that this is what we need to do to move forward. And so that's really important of just being teachable. If you're not teachable, then it wouldn't work because it would, it would be more resistance And um, you won't get the results that you need. And so I would respectfully decline um, being a coach for them, not because I don't want to. It's just because you'll be wasting your money. And I always tell people you're investing and I care more about you thriving than your money. Oh, I have some. It's funny. I was just thinking about this the other day. I've turned away clients who won't listen. (laughs) And it's not that I that I. And, you know, pushing or I think that I'm right about everything. That's not, that's not it at all. But you're right if they're not coachable or if you, if you can't um, at least entertain, right, or be, a, be able to listen to what we're saying, um, it's hard to coach someone. You have to say, look it, you're right, you know, we've got to, we've got to separate, right? Yeah, we do. Um, I, I, one of the biggest things that I do is I really try to challenge my clients to think for themselves. Like when you've heard so many voices for so many years, you are very indecisive. You don't know what to believe. Sometimes you don't even, you want to believe what your coach is saying, but because of so many voices that have overpowered your voice, you, 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 you gotta, you, it's so asleep. And so I challenged them to awaken that voice within by asking them questions to get them to, to just think, I want you to just think about it. Let's lead with a level of logic so that we can allow ourselves to be open to different options. Um, that's important for me too, because I I understand that part as well. I, I do what I can, um, as much as I can, but before they become a client, I have them go through an application. So I, I kind of vet the people that I work I with, yeah. um, just because I want to make sure that we are a good fit. Absolutely. I feel like I have some clients that should come to you. <laughs> well, come tell to them you to come on. Then, then I'll help them date. Because yeah. that's another thing, and I segue there, is that I feel like you're not ready to date, right? A lot, yeah. of, a lot of women are not ready to date, and they come to me, and they're like, let's do my profile. Let's write my bio. Yeah. Let's get on Tinder. And I'm like, whoa, 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 lady. You know, so I feel like, and it's hard as a date, as a dating coach, because you know, I was a divorce coach before, and I transitioned right. myself. As a dating coach, it's I, I'm like a cheerleader, cheerleader, and I'm like, let's go, let's just. But I have clients who are who are just not there, so I yeah. feel like they should come to you first, and you can you can get them ready for me because you cannot date if you have not divorced your story. You have not, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, you you have to be in a a, a certain energy to date. Um, I think it's important to be honest as to why you're dating. Oh, that's such um, a great I know point. I know that's a. Like some people say, well, because I want to. Okay, but why are you really doing it? Because when you, when I first got my divorce, I was like a, I was like freshly vulnerable. And you can go out there and it's almost like you're energetically attracting people who prey on vulnerable individuals. And I did not know the dating game. I mean, because I had been out of it for, I was married almost 10 years. I didn't like it. it, we it had changed so much. Oh and God. I was just like, wow, people really lie like this. And it it just, and but I was so, um, and I hate to say it, desperate in need of someone me accepting too. me, validate me, tell me that I'm worthy. And I would do it at any cost in, in a sense of settling for something that was totally unacceptable, but just to feel validated. And so what I realized is that I was injured, you know, emotionally. As I tell people, it's like an athlete, you know, they, they're injured. They go on injury reserve. They don't go back out there and play. You have to like get on a level of reserve and reserve means maybe therapy, coaching, both doing some work, building that confidence. Because when you have been through a divorce 
or even a breakup, it can leave rejection. It can leave residue of questioning your enoughness, wondering um, what could I have done differently? Why wasn't I enough? If that person left you for someone else, you'll say, well, what does this person have that I don't? So you're, you know, it can leave so many different things, trust issues. If you was in something um, extremely narcissistic, what it does to you mentally, so many different layers of that needs to be unpacked. This isn't about being 100% whole, It's but it is about being well enough to know that when you decide to date, it is a choice because you desire companionship, not out of desperation, but more of just um, realizing that you, 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 you like having to share your life with someone, you know, and I think, I think that's really important for for people to understand. And and, you say that louder for the people in the back. Yeah. Cause I was trying to prove, I was trying to prove myself. I was trying to prove myself that, yeah, we're not together, but somebody's going to want me and I'm going to get someone before you. And I think when he moved on as quickly as he did, it just brought more rejection of me. And so I was in competition, you know, um, And that was the wrong way to lead. My internal motivation was way off and I had to regroup. And that was the best thing I did for myself. Absolutely the best thing. I feel the same way. I feel like you're doing all the work. I couldn't do the, I I wasn't in the right headspace when I just got out of my divorce to do the work I needed to do to get to the place where I am now. Right. I, I just like you, I was so vulnerable and I thought that, I thought that the, what I was doing was the right thing, quote unquote. Right. I thought it was, you know, I didn't realize how abuse of the relationships I was moving into were like the things I was doing. I looking back, I was like, Oh my gosh, how could I allow allow myself? I I was beating myself up on the daily, you know? Um, it's just, I think we, we learn from our mistakes also, but you're right to just move on and be able to be healthy. And I think that what you said that you don't have to be a hundred percent whole. No, it's not realistic. You're human. No one's a hundred percent of anything. Not even myself. No, me. Right. Anyone who's been through a divorce knows co-parenting is not all rainbows and sunshine, especially when alcohol abuse is involved. Pair these challenges with a pandemic and you have a perfect storm. Soberlink's alcohol monitoring system is the most convenient, reliable, and reasonable way for a parent to provide evidence that they are not drinking during parenting time. Soberlink's real-time alerts make it easy to negotiate with any party. Judges rest assured that the child is safe. Attorneys get court admissible evidence of sobriety, and both parents have empowerment and peace of mind. Do divorce right and trust the experts in remote alcohol monitoring technology to keep your kids safe, happy, and well-adjusted. To download the guide, Five Non-Negotiables for Embracing a New Normal that I developed with Soberlink, visit www.soberlink.com backslash DRR. You know, Absolutely. It's a, it's a process. I tell my clients, you're going to grow forever. I hope I keep growing and learning as long as I'm, you know, my heart's beating because I think that's important, you know? Absolutely. So um, do you I have a question for you? Someone asked me this, a client the other day, or maybe it wasn't a client, maybe it was a colleague of ours. Um, do we think that men, I'm not being, I'm just asking, but do we think that men have, why do you think, this is, I'm asking your opinion, do you think they are so quick to move into a relationship and they seem like they're so happy and we are, feel like we're the ones that are, do you, do you know what I'm saying? Do you think right. it's, it's a male thing, women thing, or do you think it's just, I don't know. So the question is, why do they move on so quickly? Or why do they, or do you think it's just, or do you feel like they do? Like, I mean, do you think it's, I'm not making I, myself very clear. I'm the worst right now. I think <laughs> I it, I mean, I think it varies um, yeah. um, from person to person. I think moving on quickly doesn't necessarily indicate that you moved on. It's just that you may have a distraction. It could be a couple of things. It could be that they had already mentally and emotionally moved on. And that's a hard thing to accept because one of the things that's important to know is that I know we don't want to own this, but we know when someone doesn't want to be present, we feel it energetically. We know that they don't want to be there. We don't, we may not want to admit it. We may be in some level of denial, okay. but if we really pay attention to how things were on a day to day, chances are you may had got the idea that, you know what, they didn't want to be here anyway. So it could be that they had already mentally moved on, but decided to now legally make it official. Another thing could be just their own hurt. 
right? So again, patching up pain. And and the easiest thing to do is to get up under someone else, right? To look for a level of validation as well. I know we don't think that men don't have these type of issues because maybe they aren't often expressed, but the truth of the matter is, is that they do hurt. Um, They have their their challenges. Trust me, ladies, if you all are listening, I'm telling you this um, because I literally had a um, session, a private session with a gentleman who was married for well over a decade that really had difficulty moving on after um, being married for 13 years. Um, it was, it was, it was hard for him. It was challenging and, and dating can easily be the quote unquote solution that people tell you to do. I recommended him not to date for a while just to really get centered and really work on figuring some things out for himself. 13 years is a long time to be connected with someone and you don't owe anybody to overlook your healing. Because sometimes we feel like, okay, I got to do this because my friends don't want to see me like this. Yeah, they may not. But right now you're, you owe yourself your healing. Like that's, you deserve that. You you owe that to yourself to move on and recreate a new life. So I, I think there could be different reasons um, as to, to why men could move on quickly, but it's not always what we think it is. So this is why we have to let go of, of certain stories and narratives and also stop entertaining conversations with people who only keep you in a space that you want to get out of so like for like one of the yeah one of the things that I emphasize is that stop telling a story to people who can't really help you I know I love that say that again stop telling a story to people who can't who can't truly help you that's gonna be your your tagline I love it yeah because the thing is this um one of the things that I when when people tell me they're ready to move forward you got to stop telling a story to stay stuck in it Okay. You got to stop telling people and they, and these people could be family, friends. And sometimes we even go to pl- platforms like social media, which I totally disagree with. And we look for people to give us this advice that truly doesn't help us thrive. Okay. Right. So when you want to move on, believe it or not, your ex is not as relevant. And I know we want to make everything logical because we think we need to know the logic of why they do what, the, what they do in order for us to move on. You really don't. I know it's hard, but you don't have to know the why of everything. Some things you just don't need totally to know. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And, and this is hard to get to, right? It, it takes some unpacking. It takes some understanding. Like, I'm not going to lie because I used to want to know. Like, I can't, like, I was like that myself. But again, I had to stop telling a story to people who can help me because your friends are going to always side with you. They're, and, and that's great. But if it's keeping you stuck, is it working? Right. And so this is why we have to stop just keeping the story on replay to stay stuck in it. Like when you work with me, my goal is to help you thrive from it. So now we're telling the story with purpose. We're we're being intentional about telling the story so that way we can find things that we don't want to repeat. Look at things that we may have overlooked before. Maybe we was a little blinded. Maybe we wanted to be blind to it. But now let's awaken to this stuff now. Because if not, we're only going to keep repeating a lot of the same things in another relationship. Mic drop? All of that. I feel like that was the longest mic drop. Tanya, you're great. I feel like I need to come see you. I feel like when I, this is so funny about the podcast, every time I feel like I'm the best coach ever. And then I get all these like amazing guests and my experts on with me and we're all chatting and talking. And I'm like, geez, Jen to up your damn game, girl. I need to, get, I need to come see you. So Tanya, I'm going to do another little segue here. So if you're listening and you are available on March 25th through the 27th, mm-hmm. right? And you feel like coming to Hilton Head and seeing Tanya speak because yeah. Tanya, I think you're going to be, you're Thank a rock you. star. And I'm very excited that you're going to be joining us um, Me too. for the Mrs. To Me Summit yeah, in Hilton I'm Head. I'm excited too. You're, you've, you're just like, I mean, listening to you, I'm like, I, no one can see if you're not watching on YouTube, but my mouth is like, Oh my God, you're, that's, you just are really, really articulate and you're smart and you're, I just think you're, you. you're fantastic. Thank you. I really do. So wait, before, we're not going anywhere because I have a couple, I have, I have five more minutes. Don't, don't go anywhere. Tell me about your book, <laughs> Divorce Your Story. I want to mm-hmm. hear about your podcast, um, the, Re, the Reinvent You podcast. Mm-hmm. And then you have a mini course that just came out yesterday, right? <laughs> yeah, so I did. Um, yeah, the book um, just kind of ties into to what I talked about divorcing your story like it's more of a guide of things that you can do to heal and thrive after your divorce um, I wrote the book back in 2019 and from that book I birthed a 12-week accelerated program 
um, that we go, we dive even deeper and it's called Thrive. And I've been doing that for a while, have worked with some, it's a group coaching program, have worked with some phenomenal women, amazing transformations, whether it be from walking away from their jobs, increasing salaries, buying houses. It's it's amazing to see the, the transformation that people can get in 12 weeks. Um, I do have a um, podcast that is called the Reinvent You Podcast. So it's pretty much just um, giving people tangible advice um, to move forward from relationships. And so I talk about everything, mindset, emotions, finances, faith, love, parenting, just all of that. And so I've been doing that for a few years. And also I did a mini course it's called Love Thyself. Um, as you can see, well, I have the shirt here that says Love oh, I Thyself. Can't see. Show everybody. Right here. Oh, and I, don't I, have, it, I, have, I don't have a shirt. Are you, bring, are you gonna bring those with you and sell them at the summit? I was gonna bring my books. This oh. is the shirt that I actually give my clients when they complete my course. Oh. My 12 week course, because oh. it's, it's like earned, if, yes. if that makes sense. Like, yes. When, yes. you yes. know what I mean? When you do the work. And so I give this to my clients. Um, I, I'm an advocate for love thyself. I wanted to do just a five day mini course. It's the month of February. Love is sometimes often misinterpreted as only just being in a significant relationship, but you deserve to be loved by you. And Absolutely. I tell people this all the time, how you love yourself will determine how you receive love. Right. So many of us, a lot of us, um, can truly love others more than we love ourselves, but you cannot receive any more love than what you think you deserve. Right. Another mic drop. I got to tell yeah. you, that's something that I really struggled with. I know this Absolutely. is not about me, but I, no, I did with too. It. I struggled with for, it. It was hard for me to receive love. And then I, I started like big love. I, I love so big and I expected people to love this way I did, but I realized that like maybe oh, we could talk all day, but I really, that's such a, you know, and I love the shirt. Thank you. And so um, it's $9.99. Um, it comes with worksheets. It comes with seven videos. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of give people something to get them to think. I, I really try to challenge people to think because for themselves, right? Not what everybody else thinks of them. So I, I just created it. Um, it's $9.99 for the month of February. Use the code love thyself and um, it will knock off the discount. And so, yeah, that's pretty much in a nutshell of what I do. Awesome. So everything's going to be in the show notes. It's Love Thyself um, is the program. At, we're going to get everything in the show notes. And Tanya Carter. And your Instagram is Miss... Miss Tanya, Tanya Speaks. Miss Tanya mm -hmm. Speaks. That's yes. Right. Miss Tanya Speaks. So Miss Tanya Speaks on Instagram. The book is called Divorce Your Story. The podcast is the Reinvent You podcast. This is all going to be in the show notes. Don't you worry. Mm -hmm. And um, Tanya, I'm so excited to meet you in person. Me too. I'm looking forward to it. I am. We've been I like am. friends on Instagram and Facebook and everything. I know for, for some years. Right. And this is our first Ooh. time actually seeing each other face to face. Yeah. I'm excited. Can't wait to hug you. Yeah. I'm oh, I'm, I'm so, excited. This is so fun. Okay. So anyway, everybody, um, look at the show notes. Find Tanya. Tanya, thank you for being here. Now. Absolutely. I thank you, you Jennifer. Oh, I appreciate sorry. it. I'm, it's so nice to see your face. Um, everybody, you know where to find me. Uh, jenniferhervitz.com or doing relationships right. Um, buy my books, have fun. I don't know. And I'll see everybody. Join us, join us, join us. Um, Hilton Head, March 25th through March 22nd, the Mrs. To Me Summit, Becoming Your Best Self. That's what it's called, right? Yes. Becoming Your Best Self After Divorce. Oh, Becoming Your Best Self After Divorce. I That's think right. so. I see. Yeah. Thank God you're here. That's all I have to say. <laughs> everybody have a fabulous weekend and a fabulous week. Do something excellent for yourself. Maybe I don't know. My son meditates. Isn't that good? My, my 19 year old, he just told me yesterday, he's like, mom, why don't you meditate? I'm like, ah, so meditate or go for a walk or I don't know, whatever, but that's it. Um, thanks for being here, everybody. We'll see you next week. Peace, <laughs> love, and so much truth. Bye y'all.